every one, all who are in one body of Christ. Our Savior welcomes you to this day Lord has given us together. Today I will be meditating upon no condemnation. Before we start, let's see what scripture talks about in this topic. John chapter 3 verse 17. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Now let's see what we can learn from the verse we have just read. We often grow through the day feeling as if someone is looking over our shoulder ready to judge our actions. My boss is thinking, I'm taking too long with that project. The elders don't understand why I can't take on that committee. This isn't how parents would have done it. And perhaps the voice we hear the most is our own. Why aren't I good enough? Even if others praise us, the pressure we put on ourselves drowns out the latest acclaim. Richard Foster writes, The less we are manipulated by the expectations of others, the more we are open to the expectations of God. We put pressure on ourselves to do more and do it better and quicker. We often wonder, how could God be pleased with us? In this chapter of John, it describes the relationship God wants to have with us. Listen to the words in this chapter of John's Gospel. God wants a relationship with us. He never wanted to condemn us, but to free us. He offers redemption through Jesus, not because we have done something to deserve it, but because of his love towards us. Though we may read those words again and again, they can be hard to believe. But try to wrap your brain around this truth. God does not condemn us. None of the pressure we feel throughout the day is from God. The truth is that we might be trying to please others or achieve our own goal more than we are trying to please God. We may feel guilty because we keep changing the standards. We need to acknowledge that we are weak. Yes, we are weak. Yes, we often fail to meet our own expectations. But what does God expect of us today? To believe in His Son, who set us free from sin. To believe He ha is stronger than our doubts, fears, pride, and ambition. To believe that He does not condemn us for who we are or who we were before we met His Son. To discover who we are in the light of His love, freedom, and grace. This message also gives us a promise for our day today. The promise is, this is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by your own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond numbers, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seahorse. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed all because you obeyed me. Let's close this time in prayer together. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Mighty, Wonderful God, thank you for all your promises and your faithfulness to us. Lord, help us in under to understand your love and come to you freely as we help us to live our lives under your mercy and grace, not by our own understanding to please you, but to be filled with you and the Holy Spirit and get our direction from you to fulfill your plans for our existence. Help us to keep you first in everything we do and bring glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a blessed day, everyone, and if God's willing, we will talk to you tomorrow.